Joining us now is IBM Vice Chairman Gary Cohn, president of Goldman Sachs during the financial crisis 15 years ago, and then the top economic advisor in the Trump administration during a key moment of deregulation, which we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but Mr. Cohn, first, uh, for people at home who are still trying to figure this out, what went wrong? Well, first of all, thanks for having me. We had a classic bank run. You know, it's, it's as simple as that. We had a situation where people got scared about a bank's ability to return depositors' money, and depositors wanted their money out. And today, a bank run is different than we imagine a bank run. Today, a bank run happens on your telephone. People electronically bank, they hit the buttons on their phone, and automatically they can take all their money out of the bank. Banks are not designed to have deposits leave instantaneously. Banks take in deposits and they invest them for the long term to help us grow our economy. Our economy is based on banks being able to lend. Remember, we as consumers, we borrow money to buy houses. We borrow money to buy cars. We borrow money to buy things on our credit cards all day long. So banks do that by taking in deposits and then reinvesting them in, in the economy. If everyone wants to pull their money out simultaneously, that's not how banks are designed. That's not how they were ever envisioned. So banks reinvest in the economy by providing loans, but they also make investments of their own. And in 2018, uh, with the backing of the Trump administration and bipartisan support in Congress, there was a loosening of the rules for small and regional banks, banks with under $250 billion in assets. And they didn't have to do stress testing, as I understand it, like they did before. Did that rollback allow this to happen? No, it didn't. So, so at the end of the day, what happened here had nothing to do with the bank's capital. These banks had enormous amount of capital. And capital is the ability to absorb loss. So nothing that was done in 2018 would have affected the outcome here. What affected the outcome here is the fact that no bank holds enough cash that when all the depositors want their money back simultaneously, they don't have it. There's a ratio where banks are obligated to carry a, a, a certain amount of liquidity. All of these banks have had high liquidity ratios, but that really doesn't matter when you have a technical run on a bank. So then if the 2018 rollback would not have prevented this, would not have uh, allowed the bank or, or the market to foresee it, then it raises the question of can this happen again? And I want to make it more general than a, a, a commercial bank and go to consumer banks. My mom uh, banks with a small bank in West Virginia. How can regular people look at their banks and figure out whether this is going to happen? And I know they're insured, but it's still a big inconvenience if you can't access your money. Well, this is why we have FDIC insurance. We have FDIC insurance, and it was put in place for this exact reason, because we do have runs on banks. If we never had a run on a bank, we never would have created FDIC insurance. The reason FDIC insurance was created is to protect your mom and, and my dad, to make them feel comfortable to leave their money in a bank, knowing it's secure because a government agency is providing the insurance that they need to make sure their deposits are there when they want them. And the process is working. So deposits are insured in this country. They have been insured up to $250,000. What the government did over the weekend, and they stepped in, is they removed the cap. They said, for the next year, we're going to insure all deposits up to any number. So people today should feel fairly secure to where they are. All right. Gary Cohn, you know the tech sector, you know the finance sector, and you know it from a political point of view. So thank you very much for being here. Thanks for having me.